It is August 8, 2016. You are listening to Old General Friends Radio. My name is Migs. And I'm Emil. And we're and back. And this is an awkward... Yeah, is it, it is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, last two months ago, we actually had a hiatus going on. And, you know, we already cited out our reasons why we did it, but mainly because of Overwatch. And <laughs> uh, now we're back. Uh, we've kind of fixed and trimmed down the fats of our podcast, and hopefully, this would be much more digestible, uh, meatier. Yeah, suggestible. So basically, we're still going to talk about games and movies and TV series and all that shit, but of course. We're going to try to not get too much news in the way because, you know, news is everywhere every day. And we'll only select news bits where we have something to talk about. Yep. But anyway, I guess let's start the show. Yeah. Yeah, so. You intro. I mean, I. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is <laughs> <cute> intro. <laughs> All right, we're good. Oh, sure you have. All right, we're good. Okay, you're the <laughs> you're the intro meister here. Oh shit. <laughs> um, so M's. Yeah. I thought I think you played a new game this weekend. I did. It was the uh, well. We we kind of did. We kind of played it. It's uh, yeah. I've been there in spirit. <laughs> Playing there in spirit. I like that. Um, but yeah, this past weekend we actually live streamed the first episode of Hotel Games. Batman. Batman. Yeah, that was actually a surprisingly good game. It's really good. Really good. Um, yeah, what do you think about the story and the... Well, okay, what, what do you think about the game in general? Alright, just the game in general. And I kind of talked about this too during the live stream. Um, I thought that it was a whole lot more engaging. Um, people who've, you know, watched some of our stuff on our channel, hopefully, has seen some of our Let's Play, our noob streams of um, other titles from Telltale Games. So, like... Walking Dead, which I have not yet finished, and Game and of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, comparing the Batman game to those <laughs> two older titles, I feel like they've actually like grown in terms of what they're what they're doing in terms of like their games. But the quickest comparison that I can say is that you know the it's not just about making a choice per dialogue you know what i mean like it's become like very interactive like you gotta dodge you gotta yeah you throw your punches and there's a lot more i feel like they've made the mechanics of what you can do inside of their games a lot more complex yeah i find this um iteration of a telltale adventure much more interactive <laughs> and more yeah like, like you said more engaging to the player um it's actually closely um, similar to the aggressive QTEs that you can find on The Wolf Among Us, also by mm. Telltale Games. You, you, played, so that, you played that title? Uh, yeah, mm. um, it is actually based on the Fables comic. <sighs> so it's also brought to you by Vertigo, which is kind of a sister or um, branch company of DC Comics. Um, it basically tells the story of um, the big bad wolf. Yeah. And he's it's he he's part detective, part hero, and part. Well, now is it um, as similar to bad. Fables where it's like they try to solve? Well, you did you did uh, mention yeah. he's, a de- he's a detective, but is it like uh, yeah. in a There's world like, where uh, fairy tale characters kind of like coexist with each other? Because I know for Fables they had. Yes, it's actually connected to the actual plot of the comics it's more like uh, a prequel to, to fables oh. so there's a, so there's a central mystery surrounding the, the start of the game 
and it's up to Big B Wolf, aka Big Bad Wolf, to actually <laughs> solve the crime as well as um, clear the name of all the fables involved in this in this crime. And uh, gameplay wise, it's yeah, it's pretty aggressive. There's there's there are a lot of action scenes in the game that involves fighting this certain. Um, this way. fable or this certain enemy and it kind of shows similarities to what uh, the new Batman game has in terms of how vicious or how, how fast the QTEs are in the game but there's something very different and very interesting in the Batman Telltale game is that um, I think it's okay it's kind of spoilerish to whoa, whoa. actually describe <laughs> it I mean as long as we don't give away the, the plot line yeah, but it's ki- no. I what I meant was it's it's kind of spoilerish in the sense that I don't want to spoil the the players. Oh, who are going to experience I don't want to spoil it their the experience? Because it's yeah. Okay, I get you. Because it's actually good. All right. So there's something there that kind of kind of evolves the way QTEs are being played. Right. It's I know it's kind of vague, but if you're in that um, part of the game, which is kind of in the end you'll, you'll know what we're talking sh- about when we get there basically yeah. there is sort of like a new mechanic that they introduced which is you know kind of what we what i mentioned earlier where they kind of, you know they're evolving they're they're doing more stuff with their with their platform of games mm-hmm. i feel like the title won't disappoint well, not just the title. the game yeah. itself and, and i'm disappoint. and i'm really yeah and, and i'm really glad that they actually do this in this in this IP in in Batman because it very well suits how I mean it very well suits the character you know being Batman being a very um, predatory like um, character when it comes to uh, fighting villains or hunting down villains oh yeah it's actually a good a a good companion piece I don't know what I'm talking about (laughs) (laughs) no no but no no but it's true though because um yeah, you know, like obviously, like it, it's combat. Combat is more about being decisive. Like, every, like a split second mean like you can either throw a punch or throw a kick. Like it's, you know, like all those things kind of like play a factor in it. And I feel like, you know, they've they could have they could have made this game very character. similar to you know what they did for Game of Thrones, where it was very guided, where it was like, oh, you need to duck. All right, I'm gonna duck. Oh, I'm gonna slash this guy now. Uh, you yeah. need to slash it. Now there's a little bit more complex into it, very, yeah. And yeah. I feel like you know it feels more more engaging and more you know, get more immersed that way. That's at least why. Hmm. As the person, what do you think about the job? detective scenes in the in the game? <laughs> detective skills. <laughs> I feel that's, like my that's detective for the, skills. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the part where I remember that you <coughs> kind of almost fell asleep. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did. <laughs> we did kind of start late, but. Um, but no, the detective, the detective parts, I mean, had it been in a time of day that maybe I was a little bit more awake, mm. I, you know, I, I can tell. Because you are streaming in the middle of the night I there do. in the States. But initially, I felt like it kind of dragged, but at the same time, mm-hmm. it's like, adds more... It adds more spice to what you're doing, you know? Especially when it came to the dialogues. Um, Well, we're... we're, Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're talking about two different... The detective thing is actually a lot more interesting than I... Yeah, I think it's more... Mm -hmm. It's more complex compared to to the detective mode in... (laughs) Arkham Arkham Knight. To to the Arkham Arkham series. And... And probably, if you could compare it to what what the Fables game has to offer on this game, um, it's much more. It's it's not like the usual fetch quests or you know interact with this object and everything will will happen will come to light. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. This one has you connect clues, which is actually some of you know make you do some a bit of a the of detective work. And so that's a plus for me. And do you feel like doing that in that way just makes it so that 
you're forced to pay more attention to it versus like uh, you just understanding the game yeah i actually do that that's what actually interested me in this batman game because it's much more different to the more action oriented uh, rocksteady developed arkham games right so this is the me. batman game that i actually want to experience which is you know the detective part of being batman like there's an actual it's one of the of things that, that yeah it's, <clears throat> it's 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 one of the things that really hook me up in the in the in the comic books Mm. You know the mystery of of the villains, even though you know who the villain is, but there's still some of those um, plot twists and you know extra surprises that you see in the comic books. Right. So this one, this one's good. Yeah, and I do feel like if any you know game company would have done it, Hotel Games, this kind of thing. Oh, for sure. It, like you know, like the character of Batman right is very right. like, oh yeah, like the character of Batman is so multi-dimensional like I mean obviously like the Arkham series has like kind of pioneered <laughs> that kind of genre but honestly they didn't yeah. really they didn't really capture all of the aspects of Batman like oh, sure like he had the gadgets he had the skills the abilities the combat it's all there mm-hmm. but you never really and this is just yeah. yeah and this is just us talking about half of what the game is actually offering us because oh, yeah. We can also get to play as as Bruce Wayne is himself. Yeah, you know, and that's something of a different um, monster. Maybe yeah, it's a different himself. dimension entirely. Because now you're as Bruce Wayne. I mean, actually, on on both fronts, like as Batman, as Bruce Wayne, you are you're learning about a lot of things. It's like your your mind's always working, and I feel like that captures more of the essence of Batman compared to playing a game of the Arkham series where you just run and gun and like bash people's skulls in and you do minimal quote unquote detective work detective work it's not just like just to give the just to give the listeners an idea on what to expect on the game is that uh, it's going to be a classic telltale adventure moment when it comes to Bruce Wayne's parts but when it comes to Batman's parts that's where a lot of the uniqueness of a telltale game kicks in oh yeah you know it's it's, it's pretty good it, it has a pretty good balance oh, yeah. and you know it also helps that the characters and the voice acting and the and the story helps oh yeah making it all worth your money i think i do kind of wish though that kevin conroy played the <laughs> batman okay, but it's, it's, <laughs> okay. I, I get it. yeah <laughs> what do you think about troy baker's bruce wayne good it's good it's good, good. Well, what about his batman voice i mean <laughs> is it vocaloided? It, it, does he do a, mo- a vocaloid voice of <laughs> Batman, or is it just his? Na- because I can't really hear oh, yeah, that right. much when um, we were streaming. Because you know, I'm just doing oh, hangouts. Yeah, that's but. true. Um, I feel like it was. He tried very. He tried very hard to kind of match it, but at the same time, not overly do it. Where it's like, oh, he's just trying to be Kevin Conroy. But I feel yeah. like he, he did a pretty solid job. Oh, he's make he's doing that kind of style when it comes to the Batman voice. Yeah, is that it? Yeah. Oh, interesting. It's kind of close, yeah. but his own iteration of it, which I which I can respect, because you don't, you know, like don't force. Yeah, dude. Like Troy Baker yeah. is one of those guys who has a lot of range oh, yeah. when it comes to voice acting. He did Snow in Final Fantasy. He did Joel from The Last of Us. He did Joker from the Arkham Origin oh, game. True. Now he's voicing Bruce it's Wayne. Right. Is you know, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. I know, but yeah, my like mad respects to him. It's just, I'm sorry, it's just hard to, to live up to Kevin. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but Probably he did a solid, solid job. I give it another episode, I guess. I mean, another episode or two. I'm sure. Yeah. To make I'll him warm up to be it. more at home yeah definitely so yeah batman you want to talk about the bruce wayne aspect of it now uh no or i can i can mention something to that like really quickly is you the the reason why i want to talk about it is because much like every telltale games like game of thrones walking dead like any of the ones i played in the past um you can tell Mm -hmm. that it's an authentic Telltale games, when you feel tension, when you have to decide on 
uh, make basically any choice because oh, you, you know and then you know you yeah. know it affects <laughs> what's going to happen in the future and sure are... like, sure enough it sure did <laughs> And this yeah, is just there the first are episode. some choices that are really gradually heavy when it comes to to the consequences that the game showed us. Yeah. And you know, some some minor details that you think that's nah, it's just like, it's yeah. not really gonna affect nothing the whole story. But then it just bites you in the <laughs> ass after a few hours. Yeah. So definitely really expect surprising. that, especially on yeah, especially on that scene with the uh, what's that, uh, the one in front of the Arkham Asylum. Where he oh, was yeah. giving a speech yeah. and the interview. <clears throat> no, 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 that wasn't. That wasn't came enough. pouring down. It was something else, but we won't spoil it. For a hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we won't. We won't go. Ahead. So yeah. <clears throat> but yes. Man. Yeah. Right now they have an update <clears throat> on the PC version, so I think they. Oh yeah, they I had a glitch they for it, right? the issues. Hopefully. Yeah, so the, so an update uh, came over I think today or yesterday, and so far. Um, no word if that all that fixes all of the stuff that's wrong in the PC version, but hopefully it does. Yeah, hopefully, because I yeah. really just—it's a really amazing game. Great storytelling, mm-hmm. great mechanics. There's money's worth, money's worth. Honestly, and this is just episode one. Just episode <laughs> one. And I think the and first we episode ran for like it. two hours. I think our first stream was two mm-hmm. hours. Yeah, was about like much. Two hours. It was good. Rock solid. <clears throat> Just don't play it at like five in the morning. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't play it. So yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, speaking of, I don't know, games that we played this week, and um, there's one game that we didn't play, but we finally played it, and that's Dark Souls Three. And oh boy! Like, boy. Um, <laughs> a lot has happened during the two months that we've been on hiatus. Two month hiatus, yeah. A lot of happened because yeah. there was Overwatch yeah. and then there was competitive play. We did a oh, bunch yeah. of like other games on the side, but that was kind of like just kind of float around. We did Insurgency for a little bit, Mortal. And I finally, I finally bought a PS4 and for Dark Souls Three. That's true. We did it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Milestone. We did it. <laughs> Goals, life goals, goals. channel goals. Mm. Yeah, so finally, I, we get to play Dark Souls. Uh, Dark Souls. Dark, Dark, Dark Souls. Dark Three. Souls. Robert, co-op. Shout out. And to we started it. We started, or I think a month ago. And mm. it's pretty good. I mean, if you guys have been watching the stream, <clears throat> the stream, you already know what's happening. And there's some some lore shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really exciting. All the struggles. Yeah, it's it's kind of a spoilers because Dark Souls two new plays aren't isn't done yet. I'm still editing those videos and it's just <laughs> very time consuming for me to do everything. Like, uh, but we're near the end, I think. And then you'll of see the new plays for Dark Souls two story. Afterwards, yeah. <laughs> and I will still do uh, the condensed version of the Dark Souls three plus plays. Since uh, we're still recording it, and you know, struggling, it's fun doing those belly, <laughs> those belly those crawling, <laughs> the, yeah. uh, the pits of oh, rage and salt. I think I showed Emil like the third episode or the fourth episode of Dark Souls Three LP <laughs> that, that I'm <laughs> editing. Uh, you, you guys it are in for a treat, oh, all yeah. the new rock fans. Nineties yeah. <laughs> rock fans, you guys out there. You know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know what Dark I'm saying. Three, I don't know. Gameplay wise, it's pretty. <coughs> it's pretty much Bloodborne. This Bloodborne meets Dark Souls Two. Because I feel like yeah. Dark Souls Two compared to Dark it's, Souls Three, movement wise was slower. It's heavier. Oh no yeah, no no! Dark Souls heavier. Three is faster than Dark Souls Two. But not as oh, fast yeah, yeah. as Bloodborne. Bloodborne was like action packed. It was like super quick. Yeah, I I kind of get. I kind of tried getting used to the invisibility frames of the roles because this this iteration of Dark Souls is a bit more forgiving oh, compared yeah. to two. Because I've been I've been mm-hmm. observing that you know two roles to three roles are actually normal now or common. Oh yeah. As opposed to just rolling into one, because in Dark Souls two, yeah, two was like excessive. You, 
Yeah. Or actually, or rather, um, it's kind of dangerous to roll twice because oh, you get punished like really. Um, easy. Yeah. Because I think the recovery but time from three. the rolls is slower, so a person can just run up and actually punish as you're getting up. Yeah. Whereas in three, <clears throat> it's like in the middle of those rolls like the invincibility frame still build up or stack up hence you'll get the free um invincibility time and you get you get out of danger between. yeah that's why i think pvp combat in the third dark souls it it would take longer than usual as compared to dark souls 2 because you know um, you can just outroll each other when it comes to chasing. Oh, yeah, that's true. Chasing the the invader or chasing you. That's true. So it's kind of hard to hit most of these. Uh, well, it's kind of hard to most. I mean, it's kind of hard to hit everybody <laughs> right now in PvP, especially if you're lagging. <coughs> oh yeah. Well, oh. that shows. But so far, yeah. I mean, I'm. I was really surprised. Like. Like in the stream, you actually mentioned that Dark Souls Three might be more PVP centric compared to Two because now there's an option or there's like I don't know like it's encouraged for invaders to pair up or group up or rather the other way around that if you're gonna invade, most likely you're gonna invade a party. Oh yeah two or three people rather than just one yeah because that's how their um, invasion mechanic is set is that you know they give priority to a bigger group so let's say there's like three of you or two of you odds are you're gonna get invaded more often than you like someone playing solo although occasionally actually yeah we actually experienced that (laughs) that kind of drastic change and it kind of frustrated us in i think one week or one day of playing like we were just we were just trying to go through the area and then we got invaded yeah. by like the same person like two or three times yeah it all happened around an hour yeah so we've been just fending off these invaders for an hour and i spent my and... two estus flasks trying to survive it yeah. <laughs> yeah. and trying to survive so, against yeah. a crab it is kind of fun because you'll get to you you'll get used to PvP a lot earlier. Oh yeah, you're thrown into it. But this is like Dark Souls yeah. 2 had the um burning an effigy which allowed you to not be summoned or not be invaded for a set amount of time. But you don't have that here. Yeah. This one like gotta roll them. Hmm. So yeah. Um uh, what else? Any Bosses are good. Bosses are good. So far, I, the best boss I've <laughs> encountered so far is, like you said, the the Abyss Watchers. Epic music, and even though the boss isn't that hard, it is just, I mean, the tone, I mean, Jesus, like, like the music alone is just too beautiful <laughs> to actually listen to. It, yeah. But God, that, the boss music on, on, on that boss is just awesome. I feel like it was always on a high yeah. note, and then yeah, <laughs> with choir. Oh yeah, I was God. like, <laughs> as you're like rolling away with your sliver of life, and like your one Estus, and it's like, I just want to heal. I just want to heal. This is it. Just, just yeah. heal. <laughs> but really, like, like the, even the cutscenes <coughs> of, of of that boss fight for the Abyss Watcher is just too epic. Oh like, yeah, I think especially when he did from, that that from, pose from a game like Bloodborne. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, it's totally from a, from a game like Bloodborne, you'll get those nos- nostalgic feels. Yeah. So, God, that's 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 pretty awesome. Gotta say. And yeah, if you want to, I guess, watch us trudge to this to this game. Well, we 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 always try our best to stream the game every weekend. Um, uh, so far this included. weekend, we were focusing on. Yeah, but so far this weekend we focused on Overwatch because of the Olympic Summer Game yeah. event. And Batman. So Batman. And Batman. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, oh, I do want a like... special mention for Dark Souls. The uh, hmm. environment. Amazing. Oh, yes. Spectacular. 
Compared to Dark Souls 2, I'm sorry. Like, 3 looks <laughs> on a higher level than Bloodborne. Because Bloodborne had that, like, amazing, like, scenery yeah, going for it. Like, Dark, even, Dark, Souls, Dark, 3. Dark Souls 3. Even the way that... Even the way that how the levels were designed, Dark Souls 3 is more... I think it's safe to say it's more superior than 2. Oh yeah, they put way more love into it. Well, because I heard that Dark Souls 2 is actually an unfinished game. Um, they they oh. rushed it, and then it was like... I think as they were developing it, it got put on hold like midway or towards the end. It was like a brief period of time where it was just like... Basically, the structure of the game was already in place, but they didn't really put in time and effort to refining it. So that was one of the blows that it hit, is that environment-wise, it was just like repeated textures over and over again. And that's why there are some parts that aren't even accessible, it's just like, it's just, they just made it yeah. this background photo. It's just there. It's just there. I see. So it's a shame. Like, a lot of people know about this, and I've actually heard about this in, in like, YouTube video or something. They talk about it. Yeah. But... Vati video. <laughs> Probably. Uh, With that epic voice. He's the one, right? Yeah. Yeah, the one, the lore. <laughs> the lore guy. <laughs> so the lore guy. Yeah. He's great. So, we'll take a break. Yeah. We'll be All right. Right, right back. All right. Back. So. Nah. <laughs> 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 Holy crap, see the yung character name. This is This is South Park. Yeah, it's Twitch Bayan? And then Yeah, it a Tweak. I forgot the name. Tweak? Hindi, yung may yung yung parang sakit niya sa anak ni Walter sa Breaking Bad. He's he's basically him. He's a Breaking <laughs> Bad person <laughs> South Park. Come on, Dad. Back. Anyways, welcome back to Old Wait, Gentleman's Radio. I must Radio, find him. Where we talk about games, movies, <laughs> TV, and comics. My name is Migs. And I'm a male. I'm googling something. And, <laughs> Very important. And he is searching for a South Park character. <laughs> yeah. If anyone knows who that is, give us a shout out in the comments in the Facebook pages. So we are actually going to talk about Stranger Things. This is our movie club topic for the week. Stranger Things by Netflix. So while Emil is actually <laughs> very hard at work right out. now. <laughs> Yeah, he's Jimmy Valmer. So <laughs> J- Jimmy. Jimmy? <laughs> Jimmy Valmer. <laughs> no, it's si Timmy. Eh. Timmy. Oh, I think that's the the actor. I don't know. No, Jimmy. Oh god. All right. I'll no, no, no. Jimmy Jimmy turn. Valmer. Just check out. It's, it's Jimmy. Jimmy Valmer. Okay, John, I know. All right. <laughs> Formerly Jimmy Swanson. <laughs> 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 So that 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 solves the riddle of Jimmy Valmer. <laughs> so yeah, um, <coughs> Stranger right. Things is um, a, Netf- a Netflix series produced and directed and created by the Duffer Brothers. We don't know who that who those <laughs> guys are, but it is a science fiction slash horror um, TV series with. Um, Strange, well, not not strange. Strong, strange things. What's this strong? Um, Go on. How can you? <laughs> how can you? Wrong. No, I'm I'm trying to find a word like. No, no, strong influences. Oh, yeah, strong sorry, influences. strong influences. Heavy influences. Of, you know Stephen King, <coughs> uh, Steven Spielberg. You know, um, a lot of, um, eighties pop culture oh, stuff yeah. going on the, uh, on on the TV series and it stars Winona Ryder, uh David Harbour which was in Suicide Squad this month. 
um, Finn Wolhard, Millie Bobby Brown, and other stuff. Well, other actors. <laughs> and, and others. Yeah, and Matthew Modine. So it's just... Um, how can we describe the plot of Stranger Things? The... <laughs> The plot. Just like one sentence. One sentence plot. One sentence? About the yeah, plot? Because it's a lot of. There's a lot there's of things lot of to. Mishmash. Yeah, there's a lot of things to talk about with the plot, but. One sentence, I would. I uh, Plot is a. It feels like a mist. A myst- it's almost like a mystery story. Like a spooky mystery story mixed in with some. Sci fi. So, yeah, I think you're. I, I know what you're getting at. Like, it's a mystery of this disappearance of a young boy. And, you know, his friends are trying to search for him, his family is trying to search for him the whole town is trying to search for this boy and what happened during the search is that the boy's friends um, found a telekinetic girl instead who they befriended and a lot of shit just happened while that is happening <laughs> yeah and it I don't know I like if you kind of um, check out the synopsis and you know what is all about it's it's like so much things are going on in this show you got you got um you got kids there's like the goonies and some for some reason you got a telekinetic girl that's like carrie or firestarter for for from the stephen king novels you got aliens you got i don't think it was aliens but like supernatural about. supernatural stuff yeah supernatural well basically you got monsters that's what it is. You got you, you also got teen drama, high school drama. It's actually good, and yeah, you know, it's all mashed into this strange thing. No pun intended. Strange, <laughs> <laughs> strange Things. TV series, and even though it's a lot to take in, it is. It comes out as a very entertaining and very good show. Would you agree about that, or do you have mixed feelings with this show when you it's when you finished it? It's weird because I I do agree it's a really great show, but for some reason every time I look back at it, it feels like it feels like it like I don't know I don't quite know where to like place it, it or. For some, I, I don't know like which other titles like I, I would like there m- like is... link it to I mean so it feels very unique to me um there is a type of fiction that is um all of it combined like you know um because you're talking about sci-fi and horror combined right yeah for this exactly it's thing it's got to sci-fi be horror. categorized but there's something I forgot but the uh, what the name of that kind of fiction is but it falls under that fiction and mm. it's uh, yeah it's a combination of science fiction fantasy and horror and a bit of americana especially on the first episode you get oh, yeah. get it like 1980s americana yeah, very quickly too and, you yeah, get so. that get that vibe really. yeah so um but i think when it comes to the narrative i think it's kind of is a bit iffy on the start especially if you you watched it blind bl- I mean if you watch it blindly but if you try to watch it again um, it kind of gives you um, that that narrative where yeah um, a monster just got out of this hole and it's trying to I mean it is it is kind of dangerous for this town and it it happens that one of the 
protagonist's friends got kidnapped by this monster and that's where the things spun out that's where the story starts and and this girl um who's this 11 even though he she she sounded or she kind of is like a secondary uh, character or somewhat like a secondary afterthought when it comes to the whole plot of the film is actually one of the main characters and mm. during the episodes she kind of developed into something more and until the end of course we know what happened till the end and I really wanted to know <laughs> what happens there if, if she she eh, or if she's okay <laughs> you know because something happened in and in, in the last episode that we don't want to spoil but it's so ominous that anything can happen when the when the series hits a second season or so I mean there, it leaves a lot of mysteries kind of and a lot of questions and a lot of speculation like like how you said like what happens to Eleven and you know future of certain characters which you'll you'll discover once you like actually watch the, the show um yeah. yeah there's a lot of like unanswered questions and like a lot of hints to like oh this character is developing and I think that's one of the strongest things about this TV series is like the character development Oh god, there's a lot of good characters in this oh, yeah. series. Like, primarily, yeah. who's your favorite character, by the way? <laughs> favorite character, Dustin. <laughs> Dustin. Oh god, that 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 <laughs> voice. He's one of, one of the most adorable faces. Oh yeah. <laughs> in TV history. I don't know why. I know I how know this. he's like the least annoying. I don't kid know how they got that that kid actor out of n- nowhere. Out of nowhere, suddenly appears. Yeah, I just, wow. I actually, let me check his IMDb because let's see, like, what else he's been on. This is his first far into TV or film, I guess. He was on Blacklist. Oh, really? Prior to Stranger yeah. Things, he was on the Blacklist. That was it. Wow. That was it. <laughs> it's very... It's interesting, no? Like, no, he's good. But yeah, he, I like them. He plays Dustin, um, also known as... Toothless. The tooth. <laughs> so he his, also known his as characteristic... Gethentable? His defining characteristic in the <coughs> series is that he has some sort of um, condition in his teeth. That yeah, something um, about his teeth like not growing properly or something. Growing, yeah, gro- so yeah or growing slowly. Like so he, lift he had the lift when he, when he talks. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, he's the most. He's the smartest of all the. He's the smartest in the group. Let's just say he's uh, like the least annoying out of every kid in that yeah. series. Dude, he's the smartest. He's the most mature of the oh, four. Yeah. Even though they're all the and same age. They're all the same age. Yeah, even though they're all the same age. He's like the peacekeeper and the big brother, even though... <laughs> he's probably he's not. Just, yeah, he's probably not. But he's just he's just doing it on a low profile. That, you know, when, when you see the kids, you always um, focus your attention to Mike or Lucas. Or probably Will if he was there. But... Uh, Dustin's always the guy or the kid who's just loud but so low profile that you'll just you'll just think that he's just an extra. Yeah, he's like the most but, sensible. Yeah, but when this when the episodes roll in, you kind of see the significance in the story and how how his character develop is actually good, you know. Like everyone but, yeah. developed. Well, you know who stood out the most in terms of character development? Winona Ryder. Oh yeah, man! You know, no writer here is just she just I, straight up. I didn't, I didn't recognize her. Yeah, I, yeah it's, like, like even in, in the, the beginning, you don't episode, like I didn't recognize, you don't recognize her. her, and it's like you see her spiral in this because obviously, like I mean, this is gonna be a bit of a spoiler, but like that she loses her kid, so she spirals and devolves from like being a mother to a borderline psychopath. Yeah, and, and how he portrays that kind of character i mean it's it's real because you know um i've met a lot of uh, people who experience that kind of um problem like 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 that kind of state of mind that's going on in her in her character like he's very um like yeah very distraught very um 
it's not, it's it's not crazy, but very, um, very frustrated, very stressed out. Mm. That you think she's crazy, but no, he's she's just very tired, very tired of what's happening in her life right now. You know, and wow, we, we know the writer really nailed that kind of character. It's surprising because he once you know, like you wouldn't know it, it's Renona Ryder if you didn't saw her name in it. That's what I got from 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 her character there. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, my favorite character is actually David Harbour as <laughs> Jim Hopper. <laughs> that guy is so badass. Actually, I got two favorite characters in the TV series. One is David Hop. One is David Harbour's Jim Hopper. So it's like a beat up. Um, sheriff of the village so he's a cop um, he's assigned to look for Will the missing kid mm-hmm. and you know you, he's, he's he's that roguish type of dick asshole cop who has who actually has a heart of gold or something happened in the past that made him be like that stoic or no, no not stoic but you know dickish kind of right it made person. him like who he is yeah and during the fourth and fifth episodes things got really interesting in this character especially in the fifth episode because this is the time that I thought that his character is gonna die because oh, on yeah, some yeah. plot point god nah, when I was watching good. I was just oh fuck you should have been <laughs> you should have been here you, you should have been here man like why did you keep going inside <laughs> the facility and something then he just mm-hmm. goes in it and I thought he's gonna die because he's already on the on the well the, whatever that is you know yeah. and I think but thankfully yeah I think he's uh I don't know I actually I actually feel like he's kind of the odd one out of everyone like all the characters from because it feels like oh, really? on the this is just like obviously my opinion um mm-hmm. Because initially when he started out, he was all about like, oh, it's all about the book and like doing things right. This is how do it here. Yeah. By the book kind of guy. And then suddenly he, I mean, this could be character development itself as well. Yeah, he, he, he decides to question the authority. Yeah, all of a sudden it becomes like, oh, well, this needs to be blah, blah, blah. And this needs to be investigated more. And then like eventually yeah, it becomes into did. like this renegade cop. Well, not yeah. not renegade, but like you know, what I mean, like he's he's still like the sheriff, so it's like you know, it's his you know he does he does what he wants because he feels like it it's necessary, but he goes to like yeah. these very extreme measures to you know get you know better footing in his investigation. I mean, which says a lot about you know his character because like a lot of people would have been like, oh well, you know, we've looked four days and odds are he's probably dead, so case closed, that oh, kind yeah. of thing. It, it just turns to close case. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I guess the other favorite character I have. Sorry, yeah. I, I have two favorite yeah, characters here, but the fav, the second favorite character I have is actually Nancy. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what? I know, like her her character is kind of weak on the first episodes because she's the she's the she's the dumb smart girl. Yeah, she annoyed in the, the fuck in out the of series. Me. Like she doesn't listen to Barb. Annoyed. Like you know that. You know that um, John Ralphio is just <laughs> such, a, such an asshole, John Ralphio. <laughs> but you still fell in love with the guy, you know. And then you don't listen to Barb. That's what happens to Barb. Barb gets eaten by the by the demigorgon, and then you get to you get you get to hang out with John Ralphio's crew. And Just so you guys suddenly, know, it's not John Ralphio, but he looks yeah, like John, John Ralphio. Ralphio. He, he looks like John. Actually, Ralphio. I'm gonna he put him like, as like my number two favorite character because he looks like John Ralphio, and he I kind of acts <laughs> like it in the beginning. <laughs> okay, All right, go on, go on, go on. Cool, but yeah, actually, actually, that one's actually a good character also because he got redeemed a bit on the end. But yeah, but anyway, from Nancy, uh, I think I liked I liked her during the fourth or fifth episode. Where she get, she gets to hang out with uh, Jonathan, and we get to see her her kind of badass side, or kind of uh, rational side. That yeah, I think I messed up trying to 
to hang out with John Ralphie. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm gonna go and you know man up and try to find Barb and and my and my brother's friend. Oh, you know. So it it turned out that you know she became a fucking monster hunter. <laughs> and that's yeah. actually awesome. That's that. Well, yeah, that's what I like about Barb and Jonathan's arc and the. Uh, did you say in Barb? The, in, in, in the closing. What do you mean oh, Nancy? Sorry, uh, Nancy, <laughs> like, Nancy and Barb? Jonathan's arc in the closing episodes of the series. Because they became fucking monster hunters. <laughs> and I thought, really, I, I, I thought that John Ralphie was going to die <laughs> and made him bait <laughs> on the monster. Oh, yeah, yeah. But good thing that he was oh, kind of useful in a he way. He got brave you know? towards the end. He got brave. He got balls. He got his he balls got back. Got his balls back. Yeah, he got his balls back. Ralphie on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hated Nancy, dude. I could not stand her. Oh really? She got, she got fucking annoying. Why? Because he, yeah, really. because he looks like Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, it just felt like it, it just felt like she was the type of person who would sell you out. No, 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 no. It, it felt like <laughs> she was. She. It felt like easily she was like. Uh, yeah, exactly. She was like easily influenced. Like, oh. Um, That's what happened. Like, oh man, John. Like Raffio's John Raffio is really hot, and he's like, much. you know, he wants to, you know, do me. So I'm gonna go there over there and buy his pool and just, you know, fuck around. I can do that beer thing. Yeah. Like, sure, that's not it's no big deal. Shh. I'm smarter than this yeah. dumbass, and I can, I can for sure chug this beer off the side <laughs> of a can. Yo, you want to go upstairs? All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, if, if you think about it, dude, if you think about it, it's Nancy's fault that Barb oh, yeah. got eaten. Oh, yeah. Because she's the one who who tried to push Barb to do that shotgun beer shit. Oh, yeah. And it was the Which blood made thing. her bleed, you know? Bleed. And since the monster is attracted to blood, yep. that's where yep. you get, they, they got Barb. Yep. So, yeah, it's actually Nancy's fault. It is. It's that fucking Nancy's fault. God damn. Yeah, it's sorry. So, I, don't, I don't like Nancy. And like, even towards the characters? end, even towards the end, she was like, "Oh, oh you want to you want to hunt this thing? All right, I'm down." Because I, you know, I got Barb killed, so I'm gonna help you out. Because now we're gonna go catch this thing. We're gonna kill it. I don't think, I don't think anyone, like any person of her age, is like that. I don't. At least I don't think. so. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, Probably I mean, it's a TV show, but that's like, you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, from from the the borderline believable to that's just yeah. fucking crazy <laughs> i mean there's there's a couple of characters who kind of cross that line i think i mean i get it if um um who's that character but if you think jonathan about it, yeah like i get jonathan like mm, why he yeah. would go after that's his brother those two uh, actually the the team monster hunter is just <laughs> between the tween making hunters. decisions that aren't really rational but little... if you think about it yeah it's it's said in 1980s it has Steven Spielberg Goonies influence around mm. it so every kid in a Steven Spielberg film makes dumb decisions yeah, in life. I feel like a couple of characters just cross that line to like okay that's a little far fetched like a normal person of that age of that character would not or they would push it to a certain extent and then they would just like hey, it's a little too crazy for me but like it just um Let's go back to the the kids. The, was it Mike, mm-hmm. Lucas, Dustin, and Eleven? Will. Yeah. And Eleven. yeah. Um, prior to them meeting Eleven, I feel like the three kids were like, oh, they were really pushing it. And like seeing that body. Oh, fuck. Mm-hmm. I just, um, well, seeing that body. Oh, yeah. but basically, like, I feel like once you, you've seen something like that, it's like, it's kind of over. But then again, it's just me. Yeah, you, that's that's the time that you really call the big guns. You know, you, you gotta call the cops and yeah, just the let cops. them do it. Like, but of course, parents. this is this it's is fiction. like eighties type Steven Spielberg kids. This is the type of um, this is the phase where if you're a kid, you believe that you're gonna make a difference when you do this certain dumb thing, and I guess that they kind of resonated it in the series. That's that's why. That's why I like the kids here because they kind of really reminded me of the Goonies in a way. Like they're they're on to adventure, they're on to something, something bad or something dumb. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
I mean, it is part of the storytelling, so it's to me matching. That's good. So that's good. Besides that, what else did you struggle with in the in the series? Um, struggles. Let me see. What about I mean, I would. The concept? I would. What concept? Yeah, concept was good. I concept think, of I feel eleven. Like concept of eleven. Yeah. Like that. Uh, by the way, that actor, that that actress is actually. Good. Actress was great. Great. Yeah. And then she's British, actually. What? Really? <laughs> yeah, she, she's she's British. Wow. Um. Struggles with the TV show. I mean, aside from all the bitching that I just did. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think for me, um, it's there's a lot of loose it's, ends, it's hard. but there's. You know, it creates yeah, even more mystery. Yeah, it's in the ending. It creates a lot of mystery. There's no... I, I, I at least feel like... Well, I'm... I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's... Uh, like I said, these are all plot holes that I... Not plot holes, sorry. It's like loose ends. But it's like... It's not mm-hmm. necessarily unexplainable. But it's like... It's something they can... They can pick up on the next season. Cause, so at least it's not like... You know, first season's done. It's like, oh, okay, that's it. I'm good. Uh, Second season yeah. will like have you like answering like questions that you may have had on first season. So now that's up to them to make sure that all those like mysteries are like you know like answered. Solved. I mean, I, mean, I can go into you know name a few examples, but that kind of spoils it a little. Well, there's 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 one struggle that I have with the series. Mm-hmm. And I know this is gonna be spoiled territory, but it's really not. But the end scene of David Harbour's character. You mean McCree? Where, where he turns into McCree. Yeah, <laughs> where he went to the, where he went to Mirkwood Forest and dropped a, a package parcel, which is basically the food that he had, he he that he got from the police station. Yeah. Like, who did he? Who did he, who do, who does he send this food? You know, like he just, I don't know, did I miss something there? I mean, he just. He just planted it in some kind of box or I don't know deposit box from from some tree bark in Merth in in Merth. Oh yeah, just and some like hidden and with a stupid smile on his face. I don't know what he's he's up to. Yeah, I don't know what's up with that one. Although my speculation is that he's working for a different entity now or a company that's similar to Matthew Modine's character. I think he's working. With the boys, he, right? No, no, I, I feel like he works under... You know that last... This is totally a spoiler talk. I don't know if you want to get that. I think it won't answer. matter. I mean, it, it, it isn't... All right, well... It, it won't affect okay. the story. Well, towards the, the, the... viewer's experience. Nearing the end of the... You know... There was a black car, right? That stopped by him. There was... And he got... Put in. There was the dialogue to get... Chief Hopper and... Uh, Winona Ryder's character to get out so they would be able to go into the other side, quote unquote. There was the dialogue yeah. there where it was just Hopper and that that I don't know who, I forget what his name was. Basically, like the head hon- the head there. honcho of that yeah. quote unquote like corporation. So I feel like that's kind of where they struck a deal. This is just me like like theory crafting here. Like, they struck a deal that he would still retain. So. I'm pretty sure he's, I think he's still like a chief or something, and then he's kind of like on the side, also like an agent to kind of uh-huh. since he's had experience with you know, I guess the paranormal uh, now yeah, he's becoming that. like their detective now, or he's like their their foot guy. Like I would compare Clean him to me. like Noah Bennett for from Heroes kind of character. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the guy with the frame, yeah. the, was it Devil Horn rim, Rims? Devil horn frames. Chargy, horn rim. <laughs> the horn rim glasses. Rim glass. yeah. yeah, it kind of feels like that's kind of where his character's going. As far as like the thing in the um, the forest, my theory graph for that one is like they are. They're more. Kids out there that are like eleven, or they're brewing up a new one. I don't know how it works. Maybe they'll answer that in the ah, next one. So you think? So you think eleven? Oh, actually, no, 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 no. I no, 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 made a mistake. I feel like that that thing is like an offering to the thing that's on the other side. And in my head, 
the thing that's on the other side is actually Eleven. And he is taking care of her. When she crosses uh, over. Yeah, that's good. That's my theory. That is also my spoiler-filled theory. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't matter. Like, we'll censor all, every the, single the end, <laughs> Like, this is, what, uh, this is what's good about the series is that the <coughs> ending doesn't really spoil the... the the, it doesn't spoil the, the mystery the or like the journey. Yeah. That's part of yeah, the strength of right. this series is how they get from point mm-hmm. A to point B. How every character like develops, how Correct. they interact with each other, how you know the environment changes, how they learn about certain things. This is like part of the whole yeah, series. Like if you like if you saw the ending, it's just a, it's, it's just the ending like you know, it's just all right. Nothing. Yeah, it, it's like it's nothing special yeah. except for the final thing. It concludes with, itself at least. There's some resolution, yeah. but there's also a lot more questions that sprung out of that. Yeah, I feel like people who go through the series from start to end be like heavily rewarded because now you know every single detail. It's, this is like one of those shows where it's like you have to know every single detail because otherwise. If you have it like playing in the background, you're going to miss a lot of things, and it's gonna be oh, yeah. things that bite you God, in the yeah. ass. Like if you watch season two and you don't know like how that happened, like especially the the juicy details regarding the kids and oh, yeah. and how they found out about the upside down world and the connections to the Dungeons and Dragons games oh, yeah. that they were doing. It's pretty I awesome. That was great, actually. by the way. So like, many references to that. Yeah, it's and it's pretty great that they use Dungeons and Dragons <coughs> as one of the solutions to their problems. Or it's the, like how in, it's like the, the me- it's almost like the medium of how they're able to like cope and manage the whole thing. That's how they kind of that's kind of like how they saw it. I thought it was like really yeah, that's pretty cool. Again, shout out to Dustin, oh, Dustin. fucking smartest kid alive. <laughs> So I guess that's that includes our movie club questions. I think we've kind of, yeah, I don't know, squeezed everything. <laughs> like, like I don't know, do do we have key issues, uh, key issues or themes? Uh, has your life changed? I don't know, think so. You know, like so far, as as far as Stranger Things go, um, for me, it's a very very recommended TV series to watch. You know. So for me, I think it's going to be, like, if we're going to rate this thing, probably... F- Seriously, I, I really like this. I really like this. It's, 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 it's a 5 out of 5 for me when it comes to a TV series. I think it's... I, even though I have wow. issues with it, sure, like, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. have issues with everything, but that's... It's not... My issues with it don't take away from the core of what makes the show great. That's why I gave it a five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh god, we haven't even talked about the fucking music. The fucking music, <laughs> genius. Dude, they, they even feature Alicia, the one, the the one track that they played during the funeral. Yeah. Scene is it, that that thing's awesome because it's also featured in Metal Gear Solid. But yeah, the 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 music is heavily '80s inspired. A lot of Clash. A lot of I don't know. A lot of rap punk rock and you know um I don't know, so, some sort of um very what do you call this um sp- especially the opening theme is like shades of mystery hour or something and it, and the opening theme is actually awesome it's like i know whenever i hear that song it's like you know, eighties like Night Rider. Man, like you get you whatever. get the right it's it's the right vibe and the right tone when you hear it. Yeah, yeah. I have nothing to so, add to yeah. the music because I have no words for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no it's words for it. It's great. It's great. It fits the it f- like yeah. everything fits really well. It's rock solid. Everything very well put together. So, no problem. Yep. Man, I just hope that. You know, because I've heard, I'm hearing rumors that season two will will be some sort of anthology follow up for season one. So we're gonna get to see Will, Dustin, Mike, and Lucas is growing up. Dustin. Yeah, sort of like what they they did for for it. So we'll see. We'll see. 
but hopefully it will be as creepier as Stranger Things season one. Could be. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That might be a little bit difficult because part of the mystery of which made season one really great is the unveiling of the other the other side. The world? The underworld. The upside the down. Underworld? The upside down. Yeah. But that's and I the thing. It's like they just scratch go from the there? surface of that. It's true. You know? Like, they just scratch the surface of that. So what if there's more? Like, There's gotta be you know, more. I mean, yeah. So anyways, yes. thanks for listening, guys. That is our movie club Stranger Things uh, if you haven't watched it yet we re- highly recommend that you watch it oh, yeah. it's now in Netflix whole season one so how many episodes are there? is there eight episodes eight episodes yeah eight episodes probably around an hour long really action and yeah I like packed in with pretty good. it's good good so yeah um well that wraps it up <laughs> yes. so you can just follow us on the usual channels um we still have our youtube stuff going on uh, i'm still trying to update it but basically what's happening in youtube is that we're focusing on c- completing the dark souls 2 let's plays series so expect to get some videos out of that one within the month um twitch we are more active in twitch right now because it's much more easier for us to yeah. create content easy quick content twitch and it's you know mm-hmm. like all like you, just yeah. so you guys know we only get to like really play with each like during the weekend so there's really just like a small frame of window to like make some fun content and at the same time it's like doing it on twitch lets us but like enjoy the experience a lot yeah more. but but from time to time um either me or emil We'll go on a weekday stream without even announcing anything. <laughs> yeah. So just to like let off some steam. It just depends. Yeah. yeah. But definitely weekends. That's our stream date. Oh uh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. And for the podcast, well, you can still go to ogfradio.podomatic.com. This 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 episode will be uploaded there. Um, also, we'll be uploading this episode in YouTube.com. So, yeah. for, for archive purposes. Yep. And you know what? This is very special because August, well, this marks the two year anniversary no. of our YouTube channel. So, this is basically mm. Noobs and Cubes' second birthday. Yay! So, yeah, pack of the bag. Birthday. Beers and cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> thanks for <laughs> thanks for listening, guys. And yeah, we are back. See you next week. Bye bye. Oh, Jeffrey. Yeah.